Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. Today's episode is going to be one of three episodes in how to weld stainless steel. Now, first of all, what is stainless steel? What makes it different from steel? Well, by definition, it's chromium content. So if you have mild steel and you toss in about 12% chromium, which makes it tougher, and thus we have the stainless portion of it or corrosion resistance, now you have stainless steel. And it's actually easier to weld if you follow the instructions. Stainless steel defines real well in the puddle. You can see the puddle real well. You can define the dips of your adding the filler material, the dabbing. And just so you know, there's so many different types of stainless steel. We've come up with a chart for you. And you can go on weld.com to get this chart. Now, I happen to have it in front of me. And I just want to define a couple of these stainless steels. I mean, there's a whole list of them. We've got 304 stainless, 310, 316. Uh, we've got 321 stainless. Where does it end? How do you select the material that you want to use for your application? So we're going to start off with the most common stainless steel. And the most common that you'll find is typically called a 304 stainless. Uh, when you get ready to weld 304, this chart will also tell you what filler to use. And I'm just going to do a little cross section here, and I'm getting ready to weld 304 to 304. And the chart tells me to use 308L filler material. Now, just so you know, you can weld mild steel to stainless steel, and again, just look at the chart, and it'll tell you what filler to use. Now, this is the first of three in the series, so we're going to weld 304, uh, but we also want to do a little identification. How do I know I've got stainless steel? And sometimes out of the shop you have stainless, and it may be 304 stainless steel. You're not 100% sure, but a good way of finding out is I've got two samples of material here. I've, I've got one. Uh, it looks like it's stainless steel because it, it's a little bit shinier. Uh, so one way to check is to take a magnet, just a normal magnet, and see if the magnet will pick it up. And in this particular case, the magnet doesn't pick it up. So there's a good chance that this is stainless steel. There's a lot of chromium in it. Now this may be stainless, or you know what, it may be mild steel. Let's check. Oh, it's mild steel. So that's just a quick check. There's, there's all kinds of little checks that you can do. One of them is you can, you can grind the difference between the two, and sometimes you can have a keen eye to see the different sparklers that come off. But the magnet is usually the best one to use. Now, one of the concerns I have in welding this material, the chromium, when you get it activated, when you get a puddle, what's going to happen is oxygen is going to try to attack it. So with the TIG torch, we have a gas lens. This particular TIG torch, uh, I've got a gas lens, a 1 16th tungsten sticking out about a quarter of an inch, and that's going to be our standard. And so I've got good gas shielding. I've got a part set up here and it's tacked at both ends, uh, but <clears throat> I'm going to get good gas shielding here, and as I weld, I'm going to dab consistently. When I finish the weld, I'm going to turn the part over, and you're going to see the penetration. Now, if you put a purging or a gas backup to this penetration, you're going to have an excellent looking weld on the backside. If you didn't, if you, if you took shortcuts and you didn't put gas back up, you're going to find that a weld is a little more difficult and you're going to find oxides on the backside. And these oxides will definitely shorten the life of your weld. Or if you're welding up one of your expensive exhaust parts uh, for a race car or high performance car, uh, or just about anything. It's going to shorten the life. So just want to let you know, stainless steel has its place. It's a great material. Uh, <clears throat> it, it's actually easy to weld. So we're going to get started, and I'm going to run half of this plate without gas backup. The second half, I'm going to turn the gas backup on. Okay, it uh, initiates very cleanly. You can see that puddle real shiny. And I'm just dabbing a little bit at a time. But I can see that I'm 
starting to penetrate and this particular well does not have gas backup so the likelihood is there's going to be a few oxides on the back side and we'll show those to you a little bit later but the top side typically well is pretty nice and I'm finishing the weld reducing my amperage and making sure that the crater does not fill too low and we're finished okay we've got arc initiation you can see the puddles forming it's nice and clean now this particular setup has purging on the back side meaning argon gas so I actually get a little cleaner weld a little more control doesn't try to wander on me a little dab of filler so very stable very shiny and I'm going to finish up here shortly so I'm going to Make sure I don't leave a crater crack. I'm going to add a little extra filler right at the end. You can see I'm only using like 045 diameter, 308L. And I get the well termination. And I pull out the puddle with amperage. A little less, a little less, and I'm finished. Okay, let's take a look at what we just did. Okay, now this weld right here, we added filler material. We had argon on the TIG torch, and we did not have purge gas on the back side. And you'll probably notice there's kind of a burn line here. It's kind of a dirty burn line. If you move over to this weld, we also had purge gas and torch gas at the same time. It does have a burn line, and we're going to cover that a little later, how to get rid of that burn line. But right now, we're just comparing the difference between purging versus not purging your part. Okay, now I'm going to turn the part over. And this really is the telltale sign of whether you did it properly or not. This was the, the oxide. Sometimes you, you hear it described as brown sugar. The back side did not wet out well at all. So that'd be non-fusion. And because you have these chromium oxides, cracks are going to start forming, and you're going to have a, a poor performance in your, in your part, whatever you're welding. It could be an exhaust system, it could be anything. But it's not going to hold up as well as this right here. This has perfect fusion, and you can see that it wetted out very nicely. Now there's all kinds of ways of purging, and we're going to continue those in section two and three of this. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.